welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I am Chuck Brazer of Hoopty Cross. See, I knew we'd get a little more than normal that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight is one of those rare episodes where we're not talking about large four by fours. We're actually going to have some fun. Yeah, and talk about a little things. speed. Exactly, or things that just don't. Well, I, I don't know dirt. if I go that far with speed. But <laughs> Relative, that's right. Relative, we try. <laughs> I'll, Ross, I'll tell you my take on it here in a second, and it, it'll probably be a take that Chuck wasn't ready for. Um, <laughs> yes. as, as always, we're socially distanced. That's literally the only way we've ever done the show. We started doing video podcasts before the pandemic, and now it just feels like our normal. So I'm still in the Midwest, Ross in the Northeast, Chuck's in Oregon, not dodging the tornadoes that I got woke up with last night. Uh, I can tell that you that is, that's the first time uh my daughter's about to be four that's the first time that we've had four kids where we've actually had to like wake up and scramble them to the basement like yikes that was not i was not prepped for that last night that's how do they handle it because like we were talking about when i was a kid i was terrified of those things right Same, same um they're at the point now where i think we for the three older ones they've been in the basement enough times that they're just like okay this is what we do and my daughter yeah. is still young enough and small enough that my wife just scooped her up. And then <laughs> I shook the 11 year old awake. I'm like, D, we got a basement sirens going off. And he popped up and went. Uh, and then Wee, my field trip. Yeah. And well, and my oldest room is down there already. So like he's, he um, didn't even wake up and we just added kids to his bed, basically. Um, it's like, when did the dog get here? Yeah, well, and he was like, that was the only thing he woke up and was like, where's the dog? And I was like, they're both out of their cages. They can come down if they want to. Like, dogs are smart they're not going to stay up if it's terrifying upstairs they'll come downstairs mm -hmm. like it'll be okay anyway completely off topic yep. um but that's kind of how we roll so our occasional weather subject yeah, yeah. yeah. well that i did have the discussion with an adult male who's grown up in the midwest tonight about the difference between the tornado watch and the oh, tornado warning Christ. yep Hurricane he was watch, like, hurricane warning. Oh, man. And he was like, watch is worse, right? And I was like, no, you're watching for it. Warning yeah. is get after the warning basement. Is, you might yeah, be exactly. fucked. <laughs> At least we still okay, got basements. We, yeah, can we swear on this podcast? Or yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, but you yeah. can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't let me holding back hold you back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Or I'll take care of it for all of us. So I'm pretty sure like when, when Tate was on the show, at this point, he was already yelling for mom to bring him another whiskey. So he was. it was. He was. <laughs> well, sweet. Let's talk Hoopty Cross. Okay. So born out of the Gambler 500? Yeah, you could say that. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, when Gambler started, it was it was a race. It was unofficial. And it was a, a group of uh, some old college friends, including myself. And I think the first year we had 14 or 15 cars. And we would, uh, well, going back before that, it was that same group of guys. And we would go up to Mount Hood, which is a cool mountain here in Oregon. And we'd get a hall pass from our, our girlfriends and wives and go up to Mount Hood and shoot guns and drink whiskey and, and, and have a nice, fun camp weekend. Do. And uh, after a few years of that, we're sitting around the fire, I think, and we said, you know, next summer, let's try something different. Let's spend no more than 500 bucks on a car, grab a, grab a partner if you want to, and we'll set some waypoints and we'll, we'll race, air mm -hmm. quotes, from, uh, from Portland down to Bend. And we did that for three years. Uh, like I said, year one, we had 14 cars. Year three, I think it got up to like 34, 35 cars. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and we would race, we keep it mostly off road on the, on the forest roads and we obeyed, you know, the laws and we we're on the highways and such. Um, but we would, we would get after it on the gravel roads and then we would, uh, we would post up in central Oregon and start a, a bonfire and, and shoot the shit and, and clock out. And then the next morning we would hit the clock again and, and race back to Portland, meet at a bar, give out stupid trophies, which were usually like, uh, I, <laughs> I think I won one of the trophies and it was an old like bowling trophy that Tate found in a, some sort of a, oh, you know, uh, uh, you know, a secondhand store and he, he glued like some transformer car to the top of it or something. Amazing. It was like you know, gold, it was all gold league second place, 1974. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was like a go bot or something. You'd, you'd push a button and like wings would come out on the top. That's, That's awesome. awesome. 
That's but there was also like a bowling guy underneath. Like, yeah, yeah, I want that trophy now. That's okay. hysterical. Awesome. I kept it. It's uh, <laughs> it's in my house. Uh, and then year four, there was a YouTube video that came out with Gambler, and it got it got big at that point. I think we had eight hundred fifty cars. We had to we had to lease out a, a ski resort in the summer for our big Gambler thing. Um, which was awesome, but you know, there became a liability with that racing aspect at that point. There's just too many people. We couldn't have just one straight waypoint, you know, down to central Oregon and back. And, uh, and then, you know, the rest is history. Gambler grew like crazy, but a lot of those original guys were missing that racing element. And I was doing some rally cross racing at the time. And I said, Hey, you know, why don't we, why don't we split off a closed course, you know, rally cross version but, you know, really open up primarily to cheap cars, keep it super accessible, keep it fun, not mm -hmm. so serious. And a lot of the rally cross groups I uh, was racing with, you know, they all want to be the next, you know, hot shot rally cross pro. Oh, yeah. They put a lot, of, a lot of money into their cars and that stuff's awesome. I've done a lot of that stuff. I know a lot of those guys, but it's a little bit different beast. And we wanted mm -hmm. to fill a niche for something that was affordable and accessible where you could grab what's ever in your driveway or resting in your front yard and come be a part of a, a cool community, um, get some seat time, learn learn the, the true basics of racing and uh, and go from there. Yeah, yeah. that's, uh, oh. that's, uh, Is that that's not, it's Emmy. That's one of it's our, our events with, uh, we were fortunate to team up with the Mint 400. So that's so down in Prim, weird. right next to the start line of the Mint. Uh, Matt Martelli, Martelli Brothers are awesome. Shout out to those guys to, to invite us to run a short course. There was an old Lucas Oil track right next to their start line. And uh, we set up a, a short course there and ran our hoopty cross. That's a, an old Lancia uh, throwback car, but it's a Subaru Justy. That's the fastest awesome. I've ever seen a Justy <laughs> move. Well, it's the paint yeah. job and the stickers. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and the dirt behind the it. Wing, like... <laughs> yes. It's all relative. Yeah, that's uh, Randy well. Wojane in the in the Justy and Emmy Hall in her uh, in her Miata. Emmy's awesome, yeah. by the way. We so recorded... Emmy was our guest last night. Yeah. Oh, cool. Very <laughs> yeah, cool. She's been on yeah, the show shout out much. to Emmy. I, um, I, I told her we yeah. had a theme this week. <laughs> that that but, race was actually kind of interesting because that that Lucas Oil track it's it's kind of a figure eight that's like pushed in on one side, but it was wide enough where we could actually run two lanes. And we don't do head to head racing just for liability. We keep it more simple. It's like time trial. You're that racing goes against south real rock. quick. Um, but the the head to head stuff on that track worked because there was enough room to do two lanes, and people loved it. And <laughs> people were doing side bets on the side and going head to head in their classes, and it was a blast. As That's a do. really long long answer to your question, but no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but to your point about how rallycross and even autocross like cheap racing is really only cheap until you start trying to be competitive and then you're yeah. out, you're you're like five digits in and it's not cheap racing anymore versus like this i mean that's what like an early 90s thunderbird it is yeah, there. And, uh, it's yeah in they the call air. That couple grand uh, into that car at most right like yeah he he calls that the thunder turd and it lives up to its name but uh he also sends it <laughs> oh shit um, that is a lot of air time right i know that was <laughs> yes slow, it is. <laughs> still there's uh, two feet of air under the car that's fucking terrifying yeah. what bounced off of it in that video something ejected itself from the back of that as it landed bump stop oh god no it's probably something out of his trunk or who knows what but oh, he kept racing so all day hard. he was yeah. He was a hero. He got extra points that day for for that sense for sure. Deservingly so. So but you're 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 right on the the barriers to entry to racing, right? And that's again going back to a niche we wanted to to kind of break down, you know. And and I don't want to step on toes of any other groups because I support the sport. I love racing. You know, my goal is to get people out, introduced to it, and then you know I see so many people that end up having natural talent coming out for the first or second time racing. And they end up moving on and doing more SCCA stuff or more organized racing. But yeah, I mean, when it comes to fire suppression and, and, you know, safety Agents. regs yeah. and, and, uh, you know, annual uh, fees and stuff like that, it gets expensive and, and it yep. keeps the common kid that may want to really go out and at least try something out of it. Right. Yep. So yeah, I want to do this so bad. <laughs> I can <laughs> feel my, like I feel it in my spine already. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I don't feel that so, yet. <laughs> what are the? Uh, you will the next are, day. Exactly. Yeah, 
what are the most common vehicles you see in Hoopty Cross? And what's your, your personal, like, if you were to recommend somebody just get into it, like, what would you tell them to seek out? Or is it just like <laughs> caution to the wind and whatever's on Craigslist? Anything for Dale. Yeah. Do it for Dale. Do it for Dale. You know, um, so the first question was what, what are the most common vehicles yeah. we see? Um, I can't answer that. We race everything. We really do. I mean, it's not like, and, and here's a decent example. You go to, a, uh, you know, an ARA event or, you know, an organized SCCA rally event and, and you're looking at a field of 90% Subarus, right? right? Um, and in our field, there's no majority of anything. I mean, we, we race limousines, we race, uh, there's an Audi right there. We race side by sides um you know every sort of sedan <laughs> two-door we do rate that's a, a stage rally car those guys come out and join us suvs i mean really everything and you know the best car to bring out um you know i get guys that come out in their daily drivers their work trucks um, oh, their work trucks oh yeah <laughs> you know they say hey i heard you guys are racing this weekend i love to race like can we race this and as long as they pass our tech which is really pretty simple you know you don't cut the roof off of anything um you know you can come out and, and send it so Amazing. there's no Amazing. clear answer to that question we we race it all really would love to get a spreadsheet with like a pivot table and just like <laughs> comb through it like okay if you, so. if you see our uh, our spreadsheets of our of our participants at any given event you would laugh at what comes out like it's, <laughs> it's hilarious it's it's just like classic bronco like yeah it is that's uh, Aaron Flaherty. He uh, he comes out. Uh, he first saw our event in Colorado. We went out to IMI Motorsports Park, and uh, he's like, "What is this?" He came out and had an absolute blast. He follows us around to races now. Uh, yeah, this is sweet Ford Mustang. Oh my god, these are oh, so good. Okay. Is that class eleven? Like, it yeah, looks we get like yeah. We, yeah, we get a handful of class eleven guys come out. Scott Small's a big class eleven guy. He comes out. Um, you know, I love seeing the Baja stuff. My 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 blood bleeds with with Baja. That's always been my thing. So I love seeing these uh, these Baja guys come out. Yeah, pictures. It's so cool. You, you know, it, it's funny going back to your your uh, uh, question about you know what's the most common car, Ross? Crown Vicks, hundred percent. Those things yeah. are bulletproof. Yep. Fun to drive. Rear wheel drive. Uh, we get a lot of Crown Vicks. Can throw like F one fifty springs on them. Oh, easily. Yes. Or else so, I have an none, none of them just none of them are you. none of them are stock ride height either that's great this this one's for Fuck, Ross. yes because he used yeah. to have a vehicle cross <laughs> a thing has seen better days yeah that's uh oh, eric frentress he's one of my recovery guys but he takes that out and, and does some hot laps in it but it's always cool to see those yeah looks like some sort of like mars rover or something I right like that was yeah. the idea what a pile of crap those things are <laughs> still love them what's it's all in, uh, how you drive it it's all in how you drive yeah, it yeah they're, they're like off-road rally cars just in stock form because they yeah. sit on the bump stops and just have down travel it's so cool um what's in your own garage like what's uh what are what are your own personal vehicles? Chuck Rocket. and which, which of them <laughs> do you beat the shit um off? i've had uh i've had a handful of vehicles i've got uh well what's right behind me which is a late year 2017 uh nissan titan diesel nice. uh it's kind of my work truck to to run these events nissan had a good idea putting that cummins in there it's been yeah. it's been uh 50 50 that five liters the smaller five liter turbo diesel i've already been through a couple of sets of injectors uh so you know i don't know if i'll go that route again um i've got a 1989 nissan hard body extend cab yes v6 four-wheel drive uh if you guys are perusing oh, yeah. my my social you may see it i um i built that truck as an homage to roger mears back in the late 80s uh, when i was a kid i'd watch uh, espn baja 500 coverage and i i fell in love with that truck and so i bought a 600 body and uh mocked it up like uh, uh roger mears's budweiser nissan truck so good. um i've had a couple ESPN classics to show off-road racing yeah it's all grainy like seven <laughs> pixels you know <laughs> yeah um what else have i had uh, uh i had an 80 not the hot year which air quotes was the 84 but i had an 86 fiero um which i mocked up like a <laughs> lancius lancius 
start a rally. Uh, rear engine, worst water pump, by the way, in history to replace. Um, I've had a couple of classic Broncos, not really for racing, just for fun. Um, what else have I had? I think that's about it for fun that's cars. A good variety. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, the freaking diesel Titan in of itself is like, you know, out in left field. That yeah, they didn't tell a lot. lot of it's, it's, it does it does a pretty good job. Um, but again, if I'm gonna go diesel, I'm probably gonna go for a Ford F three fifty. Go, um, you're good. Okay, <laughs> so. I'm still looking for his Fiero. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, if you could make like your dream hoopty cross event, where would it be and what would it be? Oh, wow. Just dream like event. no budget, no insurance. Like, I mean, maybe insurance, you know. But... Crandon. Crandon. Uh, Wisconsin. Yeah I, think, yeah. I think Crandon would be pretty sweet. Okay. Um, uh, Glenn Helen would be another good one. Glenn Helen. But we're already talking to Glenn Helen, so we might end up doing something down there. That would be cool. That would be, uh, that'd be a lot of childhood fantasies come true for people. I, I, I could imagine a, a you know, Toyota Corolla going into turn one at Brandon, <laughs> you know. Yeah. There's, we'll okay. Yeah. So that's that's my oh, Nissan Jesus. truck. Um, the, the guys at, uh, Hoonigan, shout out to those guys invited us down to, uh, rip up their burn yard and some, in some stuff that they've never had before. And we brought uh, a few gambler cars some hoopty cross, uh, guys out there. I brought that Nissan and that's their, their, uh, burn yard ramp, which if you see it, it's, um, what I would call, uh, aggressive. <laughs> Oh, it looks uh, like a stadium super truck ramp. Like. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But that's not a stadium super truck suspension setup on that. Correct. That's a stock. I mean, it's a stock <laughs> Nissan. So uh, I left that jump with uh, busted brakes, uh, broken motor mount, oh. and uh, there's some shift linkage that didn't want to do what it did before. Oh. But uh, a hell of a lot of fun. That was an absolute blast for us to go down and hang out with those guys and, and do that. Yeah, that yeah. is that is a concerning amount of of height. You can send days. anything once, like and I bounced. Yeah. I bounced when oh. I hit the ground. <laughs> sure, you did. That's better uh, than the uh, the Alpha Holics guys that just shattered their oil pan immediately. Yeah, and it, it didn't bounce. Like I didn't it was, see that. Uh, we've talked about it before. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, that that's fun. I mean. I feel like Hoopty Cross though gets a lot of things in the air though. Yeah, you know that's that's kind of an interesting uh, point. You know, when I started Hoopty Cross in 2019, we had an old uh, lumber mill property down in, and that's actually it, uh, down in Crescent, Oregon, which is south of where I'm at today, about an hour, and it's all pumice, and it had a lot of uh, like pits and kind of natural jumps and things. And we wanted to do, do, you know, do something different with our course, but you know, we found out that, you know, the more air you get with these stock cars, it, it beats up cars. And my goal is to have people come out and race. Um, I still like to add what I call elevation changes here and there uh, for fun, but, you know, I've learned a lot about, you know, track, track dynamics and track science. And, and, you know, when I look at a jump, I have to imagine everything going through it with every sort of driver skill, be it something like, you know, that Tahoe or a stage rally guy or side by side. Uh, so I've tried to tone it down a little bit. So people aren't working on their cars all day. <laughs> you know, my goal yeah. is to get, get people seat time rather than, uh, you know, crouched under your car, fixing something, but yeah, we have some fun tracks. See, that's, that's the thing. Like, uh, I mean, Kansas gets a lot of crap for being flat as you drive I-70, but a lot of it is actually fairly hilly on the eastern side of the state. Yeah. But even a majority of our rally cross courses have no elevation change whatsoever because you're confined to one dude's field kind of mm -hmm. a thing. Like you don't really yeah. get to add any kind of actual character to it. It's just right. like how tight they want to make it and then how quickly the guys in the modified Subarus and Evos destroy it. Just flatten everything out. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and rut it. Yeah, and, and the fun thing about racing and driving is when you're actually, I mean, for most people at least, is when you're actually doing the racing and driving, you know, like wrenching on stuff's fun when it's not a weekend that you're, 
you know, trying to be doing the actual thing you set out to do. So, yeah, I mean, within reason is probably a good mojo, but <laughs> that's, that's, uh, you know, and, and my favorite part about this race series is people's liveries, right? So that's right? Uh, it's a Honda with a there. Subaru livery. <laughs> yeah, I think it's an accord with a nice uh, stack coming out of the hood. Yep, uh, STI wing. Yeah. Has, it, has the comparison to 24 Hours of Lemons been drawn? Have you heard that one? Uh, a little bit. I mean, people like to say that we're the 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 off road lemons. You know, mm-hmm. I love those guys. I love what they do. Um, you know, I'm surprised they that they've never gone. I'm surprised they've never gone uh, off road. But oh my um, gosh. That's a sweet MR2. That's Kenny O'Brien's. Uh, that's fantastic. That? That's a, what, a Gen 2 or 3 MR2? That is a Gen 3. That is a, yeah, like, 990403 or something. Yeah. That's a Spider, and, and he's he's actually dumped a ton of money into that, and you can do that. Like, there's no mm-hmm. real real rules with what you want to do, and he, he mocked that up as an old 4 GT, and uh, he came down to Hoonigan, too, and sent it off that ramp, and he, he, oh, fared, he, fared, he fared a little bit better than I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, he loves the race, and he's he's another guy that came out and and got the bug, and and he travels around and follows our, our races across the country, and comes out and racks mm-hmm. up points, and he's Ross. a favorite. Yep, lots of lots of Miatas. We get a Ross, ton of Ross just got a ninety nine that we're yeah. already starting to push him it, towards. It lo- looks like what Emmys looked like probably before somebody you know went like off their first jump and decided they wanted to continue going off jumps. Yep. Is an E30 Ute? Yeah, it is, and that's the Grindheart guys. Grindheart Plumbing okay. came out and built. A, well, they cut the back off. You can see and put some some down bars in there. Yeah, so they sent it hard. We're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of road signs as skid plates. What are some of the <laughs> stranger modifications you've seen on things? Since I mean, we just saw a car with two fronts, but. <laughs> Yeah, are, that that would probably be it. That's the the the, the double ended Geo Metro, and mm-hmm. they actually have a driver in back and a driver in front. That's and so terrible. they're 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 yelling at each other on what turns are coming up. So the guy in back turns opposite, and they've got it dialed to a science. Um, really? Those guys, wow. Yeah, those guys are fantastic. It's like so a it's Porsche four, rear wheel steer. It's, it's four wheel steering, two engine. That thing is brilliant. They're so one correct. dude's running in reverse the whole time. That's correct. He's looking. He's looking over his shoulder the entire race. Oh my god, <laughs> oh man! Have you tried it? Have you? You got. It. I mean, you got it at some point, right? Like at least in a parking lot or something. I I haven't, but I've I've gotten so much video of these guys. I've talked to them. I I'm usually I'm too busy running around running these events. I don't have time to get behind the wheel. But uh, these guys are my heroes. That's that's probably one of my favorite cars actually that comes out what are some other highlights for you oh boy uh you know we went down to we're king, gonna king of the, go we're ahead. gonna make you like offend people because you didn't pick yeah, theirs right. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you not mention me yeah. I, I don't know every, every race is a highlight because it's just it's so much fun and uh, you know the the interesting part about these races is that you know people bring out what they have low mechanical sympathy for and so mm unlike a, a higher level racing when somebody breaks something on course and they're pissed off if you break something on course on hoopty cross usually the crowd's giving you a standing ovation and you're right. on your hood you know <laughs> doing this sort of stuff and then 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 there's an army of guys that are that are willing to to get you fixed up and back on course and that's great uh, that's that's my favorite part about it um you know location stuff people we've teamed up with <laughs> that's in uh, uh i think that's roush world in michigan um, just the fact that it's an Alero with a trunk that won't close. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! <laughs> They're supposed to have that close. That start line. <laughs> I, I I love that start line because they've they get ejected out of the the storage container. It's, it's like, like the, the Baja start line where they cut. Where you remember when Robbie Gordon launched himself over the friggin' <laughs> start box? Pretty sure he got yelled at for that one. Yeah, and that was frowned upon. <laughs> That's pretty good though. It looks like the last the the last opt- obstacle course in uh, the TV show Wipeout because they launched them yes. out into the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's, love- actually that's a good comparison. It's like Wipeout for cars and and drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not a lot of big red balls. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, when, yeah. when I started this, I wanted to do something rather than just dodging cones in a flat field, right? Like you were saying <laughs> yeah. in, in 
Kansas. And, um, you know, autocross is fun too, but you know, it's, it's pretty one dimensional. Mm -hmm. Um, so we wanted to do something a little bit different, which is why we mix up our tracks. This, this weekend is our biggest event of the year, which is our, our combination gambler 500 and hoopty cross here in Redmond, mm -hmm. Oregon. Uh, we're expecting probably three, 4,000 people. Our race oh. grid is, is hundred percent full. Uh, we're on 180 acres of gravel, so this is going to be one of our first straight-up gravel events. Um, we had a track test day, and some of the guys were were comparing this to like a dirt fish sort of compound as far as the the surface conditions. So yes. it's a little bit different. It's fast. It's it's drifty. It's a, almost a two-mile course out here. Um, so oh, you know, we like we like to mix it up. That's that's a long course. Um, yeah, I'm looking at your schedule here. And you guys got to come to the Northeast. <laughs> yeah, we do. We ran a we ran a um, a race out in New York last year. Um, the track didn't really end up working out just because it was basically sand. Mm -hmm. But you know, where New we're, York? I, was I, sand? I, oh, oh gosh, where was that race in New York? Uh, it'll come to me. But I always I always put it out there, you know, if somebody knows a, a nice piece of private ground or a, a cool rally cross track, you know, let me know because we, we want to go there. Um, Northeast is actually a spot that we haven't hit uh, a ton of, but there's a lot of rally cross contingent out there and uh, we'd like to get out there. So if you know anything, let us know. I'll do some thinking. Yeah, yeah, New totally. York's a big state. Dude, it I'm is. sad. I missed the one that was literally in my so state. A, and Morris not County even that far away. Like, yeah. that's like two hours west. I could have been there. Like, yeah. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> shout out to uh, to the fairgrounds in Morris County, Kansas. That was a fun event. That was our first event out there, and it was it was a hit. Uh, they let us uh, truck in a bunch of dirt, and so we we made a really fun course that uh, that was a hit. It was that great. Sounds, that sounds pretty accurate for Kansas. Oh, yeah. oh you're gonna bring dirt? Sure, uh, that's fine. Well, we, we had to add a little elevation since <laughs> yeah. Kansas. Kansas is like that. Yeah. It's like Monster Jam. You ever see the time lapse videos of how they turn like a football stadium into a Monster oh, Jam crazy. stadium overnight? Yeah. Wild. Yeah, like hundreds of trucks worth of dirt. The dirt guys are absolute ninjas on those skid steers. You know. Yep. You get to play with any fun construction toys. In, yes. in creating the uh, and, courses and that's that's quietly one of my favorite parts about doing this <laughs> is hopping on a bulldozer or a grader or you know a box blade and and just plugging in some tunes and and creating something that you can look at and and uh that you know the next day people come out and have a blast on it so yeah so i i love doing that to that point like how much of it is actually planned out ahead of time do you guys like <laughs> you and a skid loader just having fun a on. little bit of both i mean okay. there's uh, you know we we race at a couple of motocross tracks too so there's obviously some infrastructure that's already there okay. um you know but we don't go over like the whoops that the motocross guys do so we have to manipulate some ground a little bit but i've got a lot of uh, friends with you know large pieces of private ground and they say hey can you run a track here and i go down if there's a ton of trees obviously that's that's an issue uh but if it's you know uh fairly mild like that and it's open then yeah i bring a dozer in and, and carve up a, a good track um again when i make tracks i have to imagine everything from a limousine to an rv to a side by side to a, yep. you know some guy that's got a heavy foot and a rear wheel drive corvette and so you know i need to see uh the layout and so you know i've got a, a build a track that, that can accommodate all those guys from all skill levels too right dude i, I apologize to the audio listener because i'm just going to keep laughing because i'm just scrolling through the instagram page oh, I, it's i'm with you every time i see this stuff i i uh, pretty wild i laugh yeah that's todd tabs in his uh, little buggy he's he's awesome he comes out that thing looks like it's been through baja like that or could be through baja yeah. yeah, we get a lot of purpose, a lot of purpose built stuff. Uh, they they fall into one of our four classes, which is called super soft class, uh, which is any purpose built vehicle that's meant for off road. So yeah. uh, side by sides, trophy trucks, those buggies, any sort of, um, you know, Baja class stuff that comes out, we put them in a super soft class. And then that's going to be your, uh, your two wheel drive garbage class. So that's, that's our, <laughs> our most, po our most popular uh, class. That's a nice escort. Um, right. That's Matt Coward. 
from Conversion Brewing that he sends that thing. And then we have nice. four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive garbage, which is again cheap what? four-wheel drive. That can be that can be a cheap Subaru or a cheap you know uh, four-wheel drive truck. And then we have Hater, which is going to be something arguably over five five hundred bucks. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. going to be your daily, daily driver or a nice stage rally car. That's actually Tate in his yep. Miata, his Paco Motorsports lift kit. There's more going on there than just a Paco Motorsports lift kit. <laughs> well, this is this is the one that Jesse drove too, Russ. Yeah, we, we've right. talked about this. I know, I know. I know. Yeah. I'm just yeah. just bringing it up for the listeners. Um, oh my God. That that would be nice. a hater, the nice BMW, and then you got a nice. Uh, Dude, that car does look very that normal really in clean. stock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Minus Holy the back. cow. Oh, that that too. looks like one of those hill climb race trucks in, yeah from like where is it finland or whatever iceland like, yeah, yeah. It's iceland the paddle wheels on them and yeah yeah they shoot um, across the water before they climb the hill <laughs> there's a huge there's a huge race jeep contingent in oregon and washington and those guys have their own their own series but they they cross over and join us on occasion that guy actually put me behind the wheel he's like you want to give it first you know give it a spin i'm like uh all right he's like oh it's only like 700 horsepower i'm like only yeah <laughs> and he, he strapped me in it's all manual steering right and so um oh, i got God. through a, a quarter of the lap and my arms and shoulders were just <laughs> like it takes a lot to rip those things around but it was a lot of fun yeah that looks like a riot um Dude, this looks like the this is, the, the legacy so cool. I'm looking for for my oldest kid for next year. <laughs> yeah, right. That that one's probably available. It ran <laughs> yeah. ran when parked. Ran when parked. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Is that an Echo? That is a Toyota yep. Echo. That's Shelby oh. Hansen, and he's he's one of our fastest guys in his class. He actually uh, got the the invite to our championship race down at Rally Ready in Austin uh, last year. Wow. Um, he's he's like six five six six, and he 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 squeezes himself into that thing, and he sends the hell out of that. Car. There you go, Chris. Awesome. You could fit in one of those too. I'm, I'm six four six six with a helmet on, so yeah, like this. <laughs> yeah, he a rally car. It actually it makes me happy because I had forgotten that you guys knew Dave as well. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. One of my Dave, favorite Dave's, human beings. Dave's an absolute champion. Dave's big. You know, when we started this thing, Dave's like, hey, I love what you're doing. Like, how do we how do we get involved? And um, and I said, hey, like, let's do a, let's do a, a prize for our, our fastest guys. And uh, Rugged Radios and Rally Ready sent our fastest guys down to, to the rally ranch for actual driving lessons for nice. a few days. And, and that was dope. That's, That's so awesome. This whole yeah. off-road world all ends up revolving around Dave. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Fucking Dave. <laughs> Every his, now his and then. Oh, he froze. His oh, interviews no, are probably hands down the funniest thing. They froze. Uh, oh, I mean, all his accents. He'll just keep going. Yes. We spent. And just keep going, and keep going. We spent the first 10 minutes of one of our shows with Dave talking about the DJA. Dick, is, Dick, Dick jokes, jokes adjacent. adjacent. Yep. So like we got right up to dick jokes, but yep. never and like we're gonna that's our comedy spinoff podcast. Like we just and then all his Richard mugs. Yeah, it's yep. uh it's always an adventure. With no, that. he he actually has the mugs that say Dick on them. Like he wants those, and I was like, yeah. why didn't you just get the ones that say Richard too? And he was oh, like, right. oh no, I have to restart collecting. And I was like, oh. Every now and then I get a text from Dave, and it's just something absolutely ludicrous that's happening at the ranch or something else. I'm just like, pretty much like. Do you just want me to exude the jealousy back to you? Like, is that a, <laughs> it's a cry for help? He needs more help. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a, he's an all-star and all the guys down there, all the instructors. Uh, it's awesome that he's hooked up with uh, black rifle and doing some cool stuff. I, I rub shoulders with him at the, at the ARA stage rally events. So I, I tried my hand at co-driving this year in a, an actual <laughs> stage rally. Uh-oh. Yeah. Completely different animal, but uh, a ton of fun. Uh, my driver and I were in a 2006 uh, Canadian version Toyota Yaris. It was a four door, uh, not at all a rally car. I think it's got all of like 75 or 80 horsepower. Um, but we uh, we sent it pretty hard. We did the uh, Oregon Trail Rally and Olympus, um, but a lot of fun. And, and we hang out with Dave and and all those guys up there. It's it's a blast. 
when you try to find a top. picture of an 06 yards, it doesn't go well. I think it's a, it's on it's on our little hoopty cross page. Is it on hoopty cross? Yeah, it's a. Uh, Does it have? Like, is it mocked up like a WRC car? Yes. Okay, it's so I, red, I know. Red, I'm, yeah, I'll it's find a red it. and white, red and white Yaris on my hunt. And of course, my computer just weirded out and went. All the images that I could see on the Instagram page are now gray squared. There we go. It's oh, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's I like can't. our maybe twentieth post down. You can see. I actually did a, a over under. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh, yep. it's by itself. Yep. Co driving is so a riot, man. Because you're sitting low in the car and you're reading pace notes. I've never written pace notes before, but that's a that's a, a crazy world to sit there and so, try to read while you're going 130 miles an hour over a. I'm good. Work. No thanks. I always <laughs> I always worry about like the motion sickness element of it, but like, is there part of you because you're reading the course notes that you're actually your body's prepping for what's coming as you read it, kind of thing? So the the, the fast guys they never look up, right? Okay. So when you're looking at um, uh, uh, you know Travis and his co-driver and, and Ken and, and his co-driver, they're going so quick that the, that those guys never look up. And so they can feel where they're at, which was 10 notes behind. So in a Yar in a Yaris, a 2006 Yaris, you're not going that fast. So it gives me a chance to look up every now and again, and I may be a turn or two ahead okay. for him. Um, and and I've I've been lucky. I don't I don't get motion sickness, but I was definitely nervous about it the first time I did it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there's the there's the over under for you, Ross. Yep. Yeah, that's the the old Gazoo Racing Team versus us. <laughs> that's so funny dude all oh, i didn't like i knew they had arrow but i didn't realize it was that much arrow it's a lot of arrow it's, it's like what tate did to his uh vibe with all that jb well <laughs> had fun with it. i love oh it too my God. shout that's out to crazy. eric frentress he's eric frentress a great driver he's uh he's kicking butt we actually that was our first rally and we took the uh the first time rally award we actually got third so we made podium our very first stage wow. rally wow was pretty cool that doesn't suck no it was it was fun he was he was hauling butt and that's crazy you guys look like you really do have a good time doing oh that's stuff, what it's yeah. all about you know i mean i got a day job i do other things but this is what keeps me in check and keeps me in balance and um you know again i think the part about all this seeing people come out for the very first race and they get behind the wheel and they hit racks and they come back and they're like holy shit this is the funnest thing i've ever done and on top of that then they start following us from race to race across and then they get better and you start to see them improve their lines and actually uh improve their skill set mm -hmm. um you know, so to see fresh racers kind of enter the sport and then move on to other groups, that's that's a home run for us. It's 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 fantastic. Just that's actually at the site that I'm at right now. I just want to point out how tall oh, really? that echo is compared to everything else in the line. I mean, except for that <laughs> Yamaha Y by ZX or whatever at the front, which is a thirty thousand dollar rig. There's another uh there's another MR2 spider right there, mocked up like a, right. an old Celica. Yep. Yeah, and Gen so one uh MR2 in front of it. God I, love this. I don't know what it is about so cheap that's, dirt racing. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I it's, it's very forgiving. It's, it's, huh. Paco Motorsports Lift is only 250 bucks. Yeah, huh. why are you waiting? The order <laughs> should be placed already and the asking for forgiveness later. Well, uh, Paco's because great. I'm, Hit him up. I'm probably not going to see the car for another like three weeks. So that that's part of it, but dude, we can get a Prius. Let's do it. A Prius. Sure. You guys can get whatever runs on Craigslist for 500 bucks, which isn't a lot. That's, that's the majority of our field. Yeah. Not and you're going to get, you're, you're going to get more smiles out of that than dumping a bunch of money into something. And, yeah. And this, that's, that's our, uh, this that's is where our you're track at right now. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. That was our track test day in January. So this is the Red Expo Center. It's 188 acres of, of gravel. Uh, that was a fantastic track day. And that's when we said, yep, we're going to come back. And so that's this weekend. Beautiful scenery, Cascade Mountains in the background. It's fantastic. Sure. 
Mer- Meredith takes great photos. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah, she does. She's she's tagged in all those, but that, those are great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's she's one of our photographers. She's she's fantastic. Yeah, after just spending a solid week with hanging out with photographers and videographers, like it's there there are some that you're like, good lord, how did you get that? And then there's some you're like, yeah, I, I totally know how you did that one. I can see that. Like, you go down to Rubicon or what? What did you or, or Moab? Where'd you get back from? So we did over uh, Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, and then oh, from you. there, um, I so I worked the show and for five days and then I called on the marketing kids um because they're in their early 20s and literally I could have I'm I'm of an age to have been their father with years to spare um but then it was uh kids yeah a spot a spot south of Flagstaff called end of the world which like looks over the Sedona Valley which is just absolutely gorgeous um then Moab for literally each day it, it was get up shoot sunrise transit shoot sunset shoot blue hour sleep get up shoot sunrise transit shoot sunset blue hour sleep get up shoot sunrise like it literally it be, after like the third or fourth day we were like I don't know what day we're on because each day felt like two days because maybe you'd wake up near Sedona but you're going to bed in Moab or you're waking up right. in Moab and you're going to bed on the salt flats and like the the environments change so much throughout Utah and Wyoming and, and Arizona that it it was a good little trip, but like it, when we got home, it took me, God, probably six days to finally feel, okay, I'm at, uh, I'm at my base energy level again now. Like it took, it took a while. Right. It wasn't and, a little trip. No, but all the, like, I'd say like the vans did great driving the distance and then the off-road sections were, cause we had transit vans, like nobody expects those to be. Is this all the Delicos that you're, you were talking about earlier? No, these are, so I actually work for an adventure van company. And so it was the vans that I, that I work for. So they're four, four yeah. transits. One was a 2022. And I think we left with like, I think there were 350 miles on the odometer and now it's close to 3000. And then oh, the one I drove was in the mid, in the mid fifties. And I got her close to 60,000 by the time we were done with it. So right. um, they're in Denver right now at outdoor retail. So check them out if you're, if you're in Denver. <laughs> There you go sweet chuck i think we got close to an hour there bud yeah we did so anything you want to plug <laughs> uh you know uh follow us on obviously the grams at hoopty cross uh, same with facebook hoopty cross.com uh you'll you'll see there our full schedule for the year but you know, we race, I think, 20 plus races all across the country. We welcome everybody and just about anything, obviously, as we covered today. So uh, come out. Yeah. Doesn't matter what skill you are. You're going to have fun. We give almost as many points for our, our fastest uh, top three as we do our slowest top 10. So we keep everybody involved and, and uh, in the way it should be. I want to be yeah, in that slowest you know, group. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I probably those would. Guys, those guys. They're, they're some of the most hardcore racers, and, and there are national points, uh, standings right now. There's there's a lot of guys in the top 15 that, that keep getting that bottom, you know, that bottom 10 per per event. Um, you know, so we keep everybody involved, but come out, check it out. Uh, you're guaranteed to have a great time, so. Sweet. Well, All right, I'm going to wrap up the show real fast. You can rate and review the, uh, our podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, just about anywhere you can get podcasts. We're everywhere. Spotify, Google Podcasts, leave us a review. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, for Chuck, it's at HoopDX. It's H-O-O-P-T-I-E-X. Uh, That's and right. Then your, your personal is just C Brazer. So C-B-R-A-Z-E-R. Yep, right? I'm not on that one that much. Just just follow HoopDX and uh, check out our website. Subscribe, you'll get all the updates with all the things. And my favorite part about your event calendar is that like it literally hops around the country. Like sometimes you're on the West coast, sometimes you're in the middle, sometimes you're on the West coast, sometimes you're in Kentucky. Like, so like it literally goes back and forth. We're, we're trying to spread the love best we can. <laughs> uh, you can follow the Hooniverse, uh, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Uh, Ross is no, not like the one from friends on Instagram. I'm pretty sure I messed that up. Even though I'm looking at it. No, not like the one from friends. 
Okay, I've only read it 125 times. Exactly. And I'm at <laughs> Overlanding Dad. You can we read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV Driver, ATV Writer, Everyday Driver, and US News and World Report. If you want to talk about an adventure van, send me an email. Don't fill out the contact form. If you send out the cup, fill out the contact form, they get the leads to randomly gurus. Send me an email. Let's talk. <laughs> Let me claim those. Yep. That's our show. Thank you so much, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you guys. It was an honor. You guys take care. Yeah.